Hello everyone. Well, it's official. Brexit is underway. Uh, Article 50 was triggered uh, earlier this week and that means that uh, within a couple of years uh, the Brexit process should be complete. Uh, and that uh, that actually removes a fair amount of uncertainty in the whole process because now we know that Brexit is going to happen, that nothing's going to come along at the 11th hour and prevent them from triggering Article 50. No homegrown politics are going to prevent Brexit because it has now officially started. And this, this is actually a good thing because while the maybe you think the uh, Brexit vote was a bad thing and that the implications are dire, it's a done deal now. Um, the vote happened, and the result is the the Brexit is going to happen. But now that Article Fifty has been triggered, there's no more doubt about that. And there was doubt up until it was triggered. Now, I, I don't have uh, a horse in this race. Uh, I, I, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference to me uh, what ultimately happens uh, to uh, the relationship between Britain and the EU uh, as a result of this whole divorce proceeding. But, uh, you know, I'll be honest, uh, there is obviously some uh, impact uh, that will be felt. But I think from my perspective, uh, sitting here in Western Canada, that a much larger impact is going to come from whatever Mr. Trump does uh, south of the 49th. So whatever the Americans do is going to have a much larger actual impact on my life than what happens in in Europe between the United Kingdom and uh, the rest of Europe. Uh, sure, there will be an impact on the world stage, but it's highly unlikely that London is going to suddenly become less important overnight. Uh, it's highly unlikely that the uh, uh, was it sixty odd million uh, people in in the United Kingdom are going to suddenly stop all economic activity as a result of this? They're going to stop importing things, stop exporting things, and what have you. Uh, it's uh, it, it, it's just disingenuous to think that's going to happen. And since trade, say between uh, Canada and the United Kingdom, is already uh, not internal EU trade, uh, it's, that's not going to strictly be impacted uh, by uh, a, a Brexit situation. Sure, the Canada-EU trade agreement won't apply, but nothing's stopping us from sending our High Commissioner uh, over there and uh, initiating negotiations for a bilateral trade agreement. And it would surprise me if that, would be, if that turns out to be difficult to achieve. You know, we, we already have close ties with, uh, with uh, Britain uh, on account of the Commonwealth. So it's unlikely that any trade happening uh, between Canada and the United Kingdom is going to stop. Uh, there might be some additional uh, border uh, taxes or something involved, but trade is not going to stop. But because Canada's largest trading partner is on the same land mass, ec economically speaking, that makes sense. Uh, it, you know, we just we have such a huge cultural similarity, and. Uh, trade volume with the United States that what happens there will have a much bigger impact on us than what happens on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, basically the point is I don't have a horse in the game and I don't really have any particular uh, 
a notion on whether the whole Brexit idea is a good thing or a bad thing, all else being equal. I don't have enough information and it doesn't impact me enough immediately that I particularly care. But the result of the Brexit is going to be interesting, at, even if just from a popcorn spectator standpoint, uh, because the majority of the Scots and I think uh, a fair chunk of the Irish, the Northern Irish, wanted to remain. And, and that uh, is probably going to trigger a lot of internal conflict within the United Kingdom uh, during and after the Brexit negotiations. Uh, we may very well see a successful Scottish independence run, and we may see the Northern Irish also uh, pull away. And then, then uh, we'd be left with England and Wales uh, you know, running uh, together. And, you know, we might actually you know, see the return of, uh, of, of a more traditional uh, Scottish government or something like that. Uh, we may see uh, we may see all number or all manner of uh, shakeups there, uh, and we might easily see that England and Wales uh, remain uh, separate and independent of the EU. Yet Scotland rejoins once they establish independence uh, from London. Uh, so we may see uh, the actual political division on the island there uh, made apparent politically on the world stage. Now, I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing either. Uh, but uh, what I do know is that if the Scots don't really agree with what the English and the Welsh are doing, then they really should have the right to go their own way. Um, but it has to be done equitably. So uh, on top of the Brexit negotiations, if the Scots uh, make a bid for independence, there will have to be some negotiations there as well. So we're not going to see everything settle in the next six months. Uh, the Brexit uh, negotiation time timeline or timeout is two years. Uh, assuming uh, there isn't some mechanism to extend that timeline and that it doesn't get extended if there is such a mechanism. Uh, so it's likely that the Brexit negotiations will be allowed to conclude first so that everybody knows where everybody stands there. And then any independent uh, uh, movements will uh, actually... Uh, take their uh, their turn in the spotlight and do what needs doing. That's not to say that somebody won't actually push forward, uh, say, a Scottish referendum again and uh, get things rolling sooner there. But I think realistically, any major changes coming as a result of the Brexit will likely... Uh, not really make themselves apparent until after the negotiations are complete. I think everybody is likely to take a wait-and-see approach and see what the two parties come up with. That's not a bad thing, really. Uh, you know, there's still too much uncertainty. There's less than there was, as it was still possible up until the Article 50 was triggered that something would stop the process dead. But uh, that obviously didn't happen, and now everything's underway. So there's one level of uncertainty removed, but there's still a whole lot of other uncertainty. So it will likely not, uh, will likely not see, say, a recovery in the pound or something like that uh, anytime soon. Uh, that's even assuming that the pound dropping after the Brexit vote wasn't actually a correction as opposed to 
a, a, an actual response to uh, uh, to the uh, political situation. Now, the timing would suggest that it's related to Brexit, that that triggered it. But I'm not convinced that the pound wasn't overvalued in the first place. So if the pound was actually overvalued, having it drop and then find an equilibrium point wouldn't, won't necessarily be a long-term detrimental impact. Uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe it'll recover. Maybe it'll, it'll find some equilibrium. Uh, and it'll also depend on what happens to the United Kingdom itself. And I think there's pretty good odds we'll see Scottish independence, at the very least, inside of the next 10 years. So whatever happens, happens there. Uh, it'll be sure fun with the popcorn watching it as it unfolds. Uh, but I think the implications of the Brexit are not only going to be felt in the United Kingdom. I think there's other nations in the EU that find that, that are finding that the EU membership is not proving to be beneficial as well. Uh, and I'm thinking particularly of Greece, for instance. Uh, and Greece has it harder because they're using the euro. Uh, so they, you know, they're in the euro zone. So they, uh, they actually are beholden to uh, a central monetary policy that they have no actual say in, uh, which was not the case for Britain, which maintained its own currency. So that makes the Brexit actually easier uh, on, the, on that front than, uh, say, uh, a Grexit, where Greece pulls out. Uh, but uh, I can see uh, the major have-nots, uh, or those that have been suffering under the centralized control of the monetary policy and other political realities, uh, I could see those nations taking a hard look at also triggering Article 50. And I could see... Uh, even those that don't, trying to pull out of the Eurozone at the very least. Uh, and so I, I can see that in the next two decades or so, we could be seeing a vastly different Europe. And I don't know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It just is. Uh, I, I don't know that if it's good or bad. It, it, it's just what will be, will be. Uh, it's kind of like uh, with Mr. Trump uh, in the United States. Uh, that was, uh, ge general commentary would have it that uh, Clinton would have been a better choice. I'm not convinced. And quite frankly, uh, I think there's pretty good odds that Trump won't get a second term. term. But you know what? Uh, over time, I think we'll find that he's probably no better, no worse than a lot of his predecessors. So we'll see what happens. Again, what will happen will happen. Uh, that's, um, that's just the way of things. Like Things change. Uh, we tend to feel like uh, things like nations and things will tend to persist indefinitely because they do tend to survive for a long time. Uh, but even nations come and go. Uh, super nations come and go. Alliances come and go. Eventually, everything changes. And it just so happens that we appear to be living right now during the, the proverbial interesting times. And, uh, you know, that means that unexpected things should be expected. Uh, so the fact that we had the Brexit vote and President Trump happen in the same year shouldn't be particularly surprising. And I think if you go and look back, you'll find that there is plenty of, of stuff of slightly lesser magnitude happening all along, and it's just these particular things got the press. 
Anyway, uh, that's probably enough rambling on this for now. I think this is the third time I've done a video on Brexit. Uh, I'm going to resist the temptation of calling it Brexit Redux Redux. Uh, but uh, there you have it. Uh, the Brexit is underway. Negotiations are going to be started any minute now. And we know with pretty good certainty that the result will be in the can probably before summer of 2019. So we now have a horizon for the uncertainty. And I think that, it, more than anything, is going to be a, a net uh, win for everybody that there is now a known end in sight. Anyway, <clears throat> that's all uh, for now. If you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike, whichever you prefer. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.